Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Talking Football Podcast. I'm delighted to say we're joined on the line this week by Fife Royalty, Lord Provost himself and of course former Dunfermline legend uh, Jim Leishman, MBE. Jim, thank you very much for, for coming on. Uh, great, it's a pleasure Derek. Nine seasons at Livingston as well Derek. People right enough, that. yeah. Right enough, yeah. Well People thought People think yeah. it's only been Dunfermline but... You know, at Livingston, from the third division right into European football, it was, that was a great journey. That was certainly was, and we'll talk a, a lot about that um, during the, the conversation, Jim, that's for sure. Um, before we talk about that, before we look back in the career, we were just talking off air there. We've, of course, been keeping a, a keen eye on, on Scotland in, in the Euros. Uh, disappointing uh, exit, of course, against Croatia. What did you make of the, the, the team showing in the, the competition? I think they played well, Derek, in, in the games. Uh, England uh, surpassed themselves. Yeah. You know, uh, my biggest disappointment was the first game, Derek. And I think uh, when you look back, if we'd got something out of the first game, because I thought at certain stages we were a better team uh, and we just didn't score the goals. If we scored a goal, it would have settled them down. And to lose the two goals was disappointing. And it put us under tremendous p- pressure, you know. Um, England, marvellous, marvellous effort. And then uh, last night was, uh, again, we, we could have been better defensively last night, which is a shame. But I think Steve Clark summed it up after the game, Derek. He, was, he thanked the players for their efforts. And uh, as a fan, so did I. I thought the boys uh, really tried hard for, for the nation. But just, just a wee bit short. Yeah, they certainly were. Um, the career then, Jim, I mean, you talk about colourful careers and you've certainly had that. When when you were born back in uh, Loch Gelly, wasn't it? Growing up, were you, were you always kicking the ball around? Uh, I was born in Loch Gelly, as you say, Derek. And, and uh, we had a street team, Gardner Street Boys. And that's yeah. when you played Gaty. You played, you know, the, the gates with the goals and you got a, a ball and we're all Tanner ball players. You're out there. It was safe to go in the street and play and... That's where I learned that. And we arranged, we arranged games against other streets. And, uh, and that was brilliant. I think when I really started learning football, uh, Derek, was when we moved to a place called Lumferens Road. It was still in Loch Kelly. My, my grand died and we went to stay with my grandfather. Yeah. And every Sunday, Bruce Celtic played Bruce Rangers. And it was two brothers, Ali Bird and Jordy Bird. The uh, Ali Bird was a Celtic supporter, and Jordy Bird, his brother, was Rangers. And they had a cardboard, a cardboard cutout in the Scottish Cup. And at that time, you got silver paper in the cigarette packets. And so they crushed that and wrapped it around the cup. And it was like every Sunday was like the Champions League. Eh? <laughs> and I, I, I got to play with my two brothers. My, I, I was the youngest. I was 12 year old, and my brothers were. Uh, 15, 16, and that's where I learned, you know, you got played at that time, we called it, we're playing with the big boys, and I learned to defend myself and stick up for myself. But, oh, it was, it was, and, and Jordi Bird, it was his ball, Derek, right? And if it's Bruce Hill Rangers were getting beat three or four, nothing, Jordi Bird would get his ball, he would go, hey, we didn't have a ball to play with. That's how bad <laughs> it was. <laughs> but great fun. Absolutely. Did, did you have a team growing up? Did you follow? Was it? Did you follow Dunfermline Gym or did you support anybody else? No, Dunfermline. When I was younger, Derek, uh, Dunfermline. You know, in the, in the sixties, Dunfermline played forty-one games in Europe. Yeah. For, and they, they'd won two Scottish Cups, semi-final of the European Cup. So the, you know they were a big, big team at that time, eh? Yeah. And they, when I, I signed for them at fourteen-year-old as a schoolboy. And, uh, and, you know, that was great. That yeah. was great at the time because they, they were beating everybody. I know. Uh, we've had, um, we had Bert Payton on a few months ago, yeah. uh, Jim, and, I mean, he would have, he, he, he played in those games. I mean, did you, did you learn for guys like that when you went in there? When, when I first signed professional, Derek, right, when I first signed, the, the, uh, prof- the, uh, Bert had broke his leg. Yeah. So he was in the gym all the time. He was now in the playing field. He was recovering from, from injury. But I can remember him saying to me and a guy called Jim Scott, who played for the film midfield, and we were young guys, and he says, look, 
you guys, look at you. You're big enough, you're strong enough. Get out and get in the team. Doesn't matter how old you are. Get out and get playing. So he, he encouraged us to give it a go, eh? Bertie was a good player for Dunfermline. You know, he was a good player. Signed him for, I think he got freed for Leeds United and came up yeah. and played with Dunfermline. Yeah. Since 68, when they won the Scottish Cup, did you did you go over to Hamden, Jim? We, all the S forms got an invite through. Yeah. Right, all the schoolboys, we got, we got uh, an invite through yeah. uh, to go and see the game. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, a really big team in that time, Derek. I know. It's, it's I know, in the European Cup and everyone, eh? The semi-final. But if you talk to the players that played in that game, Bert Payton, Charlie, uh, yeah. um, Paddy Gardner, Hugh Rob, all these guys yeah. that played, Roy Barry, they felt, you know, the, the hard part about the 68 Cup final was that Hearts were the underdogs. Yeah. You know, Dunfermline thought they were far better than them at yeah. that time. And they were. They won the game 3-1. But the best team they say they had there in the 60s, they say the 65 team. Yeah. They got beat off Billy McNeil header in the last couple of minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, all the boys say that was the best team that Dunfermline had. Yeah. Did, did you clean anybody's boots, Jim, when you were, when you were coming oh. through the ranks there? Derek, it was a nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare. You know, you, on a Monday morning, our job, right, me and somebody else one week, we would clean the boots on the Monday morning. And if they played a, a European game midweek, you had to do the same the next day. So you were playing that they didn't have a European game that week, so you'd only clean the boots one bit. You cleaned them all. Alec Edwards, see the wee, the wee wire, the wee eye, was a uh, good player. And, uh, Roy Barry. I was, actually, I was with Roy Barry watching the game last night. That's who I mean, what a character he is. Yeah. Yeah, cracking. Um, you're a defender, Jim. Did you did you were you always wanting to be a defender? Did you always play there or did you did you play any other positions coming through the, the ranks there? I, I was a, I was a centre half or a right back, Derek. Yeah. But I made my debut in midfield for Dunfermline against Air United. Uh-huh. Uh, so I started off uh, my first season just playing in midfield. Yeah. And uh, I scored I scored the uh, Many goals. I scored three goals uh-huh. uh, the first season. Wow. Can you remember much about your debut? Uh, I was down at, down at Somerset Park. Alec Ferguson was playing. Yeah. Uh, Cutty Sharp, Quentin Young. Well, they, they're, they're a, you, know, you know what I remembered, Derek, was how tough it was, eh? Aye. I was only, I was only 17. And you got chucked in and the boys were saying, hey, this is the first team. Do your job, you know. Yeah. You're no wee boy. Yeah. You got to treat it like a man, and, and you had to go and earn your corn, eh? Uh-huh. And it was really uh, it passed so quickly, Derek. Even then, the, but they were they were they were they were hard. They were harder boys then than what they are now, Derek. And, and that's no oh, that's I'm going back in time. That's genuine, yeah. genuine. They were they, all the Motherwell, Airdrie. My God, come you were you're going out and saying, oh, come on. <laughs> Where's my gun? Because you could away with a few robust challenges back then, couldn't you, Jim? Oh, you, well, the, the, all the senior pros used to say before they, before you went out in the dressing room, make sure your first one's a good one, son. Aye. Make sure your first one's a good one. You'll get away with your first one. And uh, unfortunately, the first one always happened to me, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you had to be tough. You had to be tougher. Yeah, you know at that time because the, the laws of the game were different, of course. Derek, okay? you right. were allowed to tackle differently, and and it was a different uh, a different game at that time. Yeah, and see the pitches, Jim, as well. That's something that when we speak to players that played back then. I mean, the pitches were sometimes they were right bogs, weren't they? You look at the pitches now, and they're like bowling greens. Yeah, East End, Derek. If you if you go to, if you go to East End, right, and have a look, and you've got outside, you've got the road. Holby Road, yeah. the famous Holby Road, and you look at the, where the road is, and you come down quite a bit. Aye. So the water's no flowing up the way, Derek. It's coming down the way. The other side, you've got the cemetery on the hill, so the water was always coming down. At East End, we had a problem with the drainage because of the the pipes were too small, so the water was getting to the pipes, but it wasn't getting away quick enough. So Aye. it came back onto the pitch, and we had a 
in the sixties, they had a, uh, it, it was quite boggy. Aye, <laughs> but hey, if you're a big ugly defender, that suit that you brought. Aye, absolutely. See the, the see the manager at that time, Jim. Was it George Farm that that, that gave you your debut? Was that the manager? No, George Farm signed me, Derek. Right, George okay. Farm signed me as a schoolboy. I could have went to I could have went to Tottenham Hotspur. I could have went to Newcastle. Oh, really? Uh, oh. Uh, I could have went to uh, Aberdeen, Dundee United at that time. Yeah. But Dunfermline, as you say, were a big team. So George Farm sent me as an S form. But uh, Alec Wright, uh, can you remember Alec St. Martin and Dumbarton? Yeah. Oh, Sonny, he was the manager when I made my debut, and Willie McLean. Willie McLean was the assistant manager, and they gave him my debut down at air. Yeah. Do you ever look back on that? I mean, Tottenham, uh, I guess, as a, a young boy, it must have seemed like the other end of the world um, going down to London. Is that is that something you look back and think, maybe if I, I could have maybe moved down there? Uh, it wouldn't have bothered me moving down because, uh, you know, all my young life, I just wanted to be a football player. Aye. I think that the, Joe Harvey actually come up there to, uh, to Loch Kelly. Yeah. Where, where a guy called... Mick McGinley, who was the manager and scout, it was the manager at Valleyfield, yeah. Valleyfield Boys Club, and but he was a Newcastle scout. They came up, and at Dunfermline, I got offered twelve pound a week to sign for them, and five pound if you're in the reserves. Yeah, and I'd been getting five pound a week put away in the bank, and if I signed for Dunfermline, I got that five quid that I'd accumulated. Newcastle, they offered me £15 basic and my, my mum and dad to come down twice uh, to, uh, to come and see me play if I was in the reserves. Because I was only 16 at the time, so they, they were getting a trip to Newcastle twice to come <laughs> and see me play. Yeah? But my, my dad wouldn't let me leave school, Derek. Ah, yeah. He wouldn't let me leave school. Uh -huh. my, my dad was a coal miner and uh, he says, no, you, you've, you, you can get your qualification, so you stay on. Yeah. And get your qualifications. Yeah. And I'm glad I did, eh? Aye. I'm glad that was great advice from my father. Eh? So all my pals were leaving to, to play for Dunfermline or sign for Dunfermline. Uh -huh. And I was still at another year at school. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Of course, uh, the famous Rangers game, Jim, when you scored that, that winner. I mean, it's, it's still to this day the last time uh, Dunfermline won at Ibrooks. Um, memories of, of that day must have been a, a, a memorable one for you. It was. It was one of these games then we were we were fighting relegation. Yeah. And uh, every point was a prisoner. I scored on the Saturday actually, Derek, against Clyde uh -huh. at East End Park, a, a, a header, a diving header. Uh, and we got a 2 2 draw. And then going through to Glasgow, you know, it was Rangers had just qualified for the European Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. So the Rangers fans were all saving up to go to Barcelona. To play Moscow, Moscow Dynamo, so there wasn't very many people at the game. And what I remember, Derek, I, I, I was playing in midfield at the time, and, and the Rangers team was something like uh, McCloy, yeah. McCloy, Jardin, uh, Dave Smith, Colin Jackson, Willie Matheson, Willie Johnson, Alfie Cohn, Colin Steen, Derek Johnson, <laughs> Alec McDonald. I, I think it was Willie Henderson's last game for Rangers. Yeah. We won his last game for the Rangers that night. And we just got told, out we go. Look, look, guys, come on. We need a result here. Get out and get stuck in. They'll be thinking about the, the, the cup final, eh? Yeah. And, uh, and another thing, my brother was, my mum, my pal, my, my, one of my best pals uh, used to take my mum to the game in the midweek games. And uh, my mum was at the game. And my brother, who was a fanatical Celtic supporter, the three of them were in the stand, and the 40, 40 or the eight, the first minute, sorry, the Copeland Road, and I got the ball, and I scored there, and I ran, and I was running up the side of the stand looking for my mum, just to give her a wave, eh? and I looked up, and who's standing up was my brother, eh? my brother, the sales brother, and I, I'm saying to myself, I hope, I hope in hell, he's not going to sell to his car phone, <laughs> because he'll get a, he'll get a doing, eh? and he's up there <laughs> shouting there again. And I got a tenner after the game, Derek. Wow. The manager, eh? Now, the manager had changed. It was George Muller and Ralph Brand. George and Ralph Brand were the manager, the assistant manager. 
Yeah. And I'm going up the tunnel after the game, the one four three, and I scored the fourth goal. Yeah. And Joe DeMar gave me a tenner. Because I was only in 12 quid a week, and I was saying, this is magic, man, a tenner. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? Christ, eh? So there was some, it was some goal, was it, did you beat two men and then fired it past McCloy? Was, it wasn't like a tap in or anything, was it? Was it, was it no, 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 no. Well, and it was my, well, I really didn't have a bad foot then. I could play with both feet. Yeah. But I played left back for the team. I played right back. I played left midfield, right midfield. And uh, I just got the ball. I can't even mind who passed the ball. And, go and then uh, I beat the two de- two defenders. Uh, and, and, uh, and then I hit it with my left foot. And Derek, I was that far out, I shouted, Didn't bother diving? <laughs> <laughs> and I scored. Oh, it was just amazing, Derek. 17-year-old at Ibrox. Amazing. Yeah. That's, that's what dreams what a great feeling, man. Um, apart from Ibrooks, was there any other places you liked playing it um, when you were a player? Oh, uh, I liked all the five clubs, eh? Aye. I liked playing at Easter, uh, East Five. Yeah. I, I liked playing at uh, uh, Bayview, uh, East Five, Bayview, yeah. Cowden Beath and uh, uh, Starts Park. Yeah. It was great to that because I was a local boy. Yeah, I loved playing them. Yeah. Getting stuck and getting the, getting the crowd against you, and that was brilliant. I'd have been good. They all used to slag me, Derek, eh? What's that? They all used to slag me, all the, the, <laughs> the Wraith Rover supporters, eh? And the East Fife supporters. And I knew them, eh? I knew the boys, and that. they used to shout, at least, man, you're. And I used to shout, you're only shouting at me because I'm going to be your girlfriend tonight. <laughs> Did you enjoy yeah, that then, Jim? I noise up with the, with the fans and all that. You look like the sort of guy you'd love that sort of stuff. Oh, it didn't bother me, Derek. Aye. You know, it never bothered me at the time. I, I knew I was doing my job if I was getting stuck for the opposition. Eh? Aye. And the of fans. course, you'd play alongside uh, Dick Campbell as well. As a, what was he like, Jim? He was slow. <laughs> Thank God I covered them. <laughs> I played with Dick, you know. We played, Dick, Richard and I, Richard and I played when we were 13. We were town old boys club. 13. Yeah. And uh, we won, never lost a game. We went to Town Hall Boys Club under 16. And uh, we played for two seasons and we won the, the second juvenile Scottish Cup. Yeah. Uh, Crossroads United, we beat in Edinburgh. And uh, Richard at that time was a, a striker. Wow. He got signed for Dundee United as a striker. And he scored, I think, this this is you think I'm slaving, but he scored some like 165 goals in the one year, eh? Oh, no, but we were beating teams 20 nothing in that, and Aye. Dick was scoring 12 goals. Now he was a, he thought he was a bee's knees, eh? <laughs> but um, but he was a he was a good player, Richard, and and he signed for Dundee United. Walt, Walt Smith and all the guys were there. Yeah, and they. Uh, yeah, but we, Richard played the night I broke my leg in 1974. Yeah. Richard and I were uh, double centre halves. But I, I was sort of the double centre half because I did twice as much work as him. Yeah. <laughs> that, that night, Jim, I mean, uh, can you remember much about it when uh, you broke your leg? I mean, uh, can you talk us through it? Did, did you know that I, it was a bad one? I had the. Uh, I quite got it. We played them the week before. Derek at Tynecastle, and we, we beat them. We beat them at Tynecastle 3 3 1 or 3 2. We Jackie Sinclair scored two or three goals that night. Yeah. The wee boy played with them, fell and went to Leicester, and he played for Newcastle in the first Cities Cup. He was he was a great wee player. And uh, the season before, I had played with him. I was right back the season before the whole season, and he was the right winger. And it was a great learning cup for me. Great. And then that night, uh, I can remember leaving the house my dad says James enjoy yourself the night I was playing against we Donald Ford who was in the World Cup squad 1974 World Cup squad we, we Donald and the manager he, he said to me for, they used to call me Don Juan Derek right uh, he says Don Juan if Donald Ford goes out for a shit you go and wipe his arse that was my instructions very technical I thought <laughs> that's great great tactics Gaffer, right? I, I, I'll make sure I've got a, I, I'll make sure I've got some lovely paper with me. You know what I mean? Good sake! And I was doing well, Derek. Honestly, the self praise is no honour, but I was playing well yeah. at that time. And at that time, uh, Leeds United and uh, Liverpool were scouting me. A guy for Liverpool called Jeff Twentyman 
Yeah. Who was Shankly's chief scout and the guy, Andy Young, Young McNaughton Life at Reef Rovers, the, the older guys will remember that. Andy was the chief scout for, for Leeds. And Andy sent me for Dunfermline. He was a scout for Dunfermline and sent me for them. And Andy always had a, you know, he had great faith in me. And he Don Revy was actually in the stand that night and broke my leg. So I was, I was really playing well and um, he, I was giving Donald Ford a hard time, Derek, and yeah. it was a 50-50 and Jim Jeffries come in and stuck his foot out of my leg, went through the ball and his leg come down and a compound fracture. Never recovered from it. I know, Never I the same. Aye, I broke you're, my heart a wee bit. You were out for what, 17 months or something? I mean, that's... that's 17 months, Derek. That must have happened. What happened, I got the wrong training. I got yeah. all the wrong training, Derek. I went for 11 stone 6 to 13 stone 5. Yeah. And then then uh, Ralph Brand says, right, come on, you let's get let's get down to business. And I was training three times a day. Wow. But I was lifting two heavy weights. Yeah. And instead of lighter weights, short and sharp, yeah. I was getting the big weights. Of course, I was I was bulking up. Aye. I was bulking up and uh, but Ralph Grant was great. He's, he, I don't know if he's still alive, but I knew he was ill there. Yeah. And um, if anybody's listening that knows him, uh, I smash him. Great. It must but be hard. three times a day, Derek. Aye, that's that's crazy. Six days a week to try and get back. Yeah. And when I come back in, I was just no no. Uh, I couldn't turn as quick. I couldn't run just as quick. People think you. Uh, oh, he's no tackling now. Rubbish. It's just that you were getting there too late. If I, if I tackled, I was going to commit fouls. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to change a wee bit and stand up a bit. But never the same, Derek. Never. See, 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 mentally that, Jim, is that hard? I mean, physically, of course, it's tough, but mentally being out and being away for like the, the band in the dressing room and all that, was it? I guess that must have been hard as well. And I, I never thought about it. I was quite, I was quite positive. See me, Anna, when I went out at three o'clock, five to three, Derek, my attitude was spot on. I'm yeah. not saying I played great every time, but I was, I was ready to play great. I yeah. was ready mentally. So I had a good uh, mental attitude, positive. It was, it was, uh, uh, my right leg is a wee bit shorter than my left leg now. And that was causing my problem. When I got tired, I was limping a wee bit and it just wasn't, it wasn't quite right, Derek. So it was no, I wasn't Derek. I wasn't fair to the attack. Oh, that was that was the biggest part of my game, yeah. winning the ball. It was just no. Nah. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, you left in film and uh, Jim. You had a wee short spell at Cowden Beef. Was that to try and sort of what, what was the thinking behind that move to try and sort of reinvigorate your career there? Uh, just to get a first team game, Derek. To try Aye. and get back playing first team football. Eh? Yeah. But even then, no. No, I was struggling, Derek, eh? I was yeah. struggling. Cowden Beath was in a... Frank Connor was the manager, the famous, the legend, uh, Frank Connor was there. And, uh, I played well in a, res a reserve game against Cowden Beath. I, I played really well. And uh, Frank signed me. And I got, I got a 1,500 quid, Derek, for signing. A nice. thousand pound for an engagement ring because I was getting engaged. And 500 for a set of golf clubs. <laughs> if, if the golf clubs were six hundred pound, Derek, she would have got a nine hundred pound engagement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hearing you, Jim. And I mean, you were we already we already thinking about the coaching when when no was that not at all, Derek. Not, I, no. I did coaching, Derek, when I was eighteen, nineteen. Uh -huh. We a, a team called Woodmull, no, full for primary school. My friend asked me, "Look, Jim, will you take the kids?" So me and my pal, uh, James McLean, who, who uh, took my mum to games and everything, we, we went and we took and a great bunch of boys, a really good bunch of boys, eh? Uh, and then they became uh, Woodmull Boys Club for a year and then Riverside. And they went on to win the Scottish Under-16 Cup as well, eh? So yeah. great. And then I took the Railway Club Under-18s for a week while. Uh -huh. But... No, I didn't think about senior senior football or that. Yeah. No. Yeah, the wee spell was at Kelty Hearts, and did you take the Dunfermline youth team for a, a wee bit, Jim? No, before before Kelty Hearts, Derek, I was uh, I was sitting in the pub, a pub called the Somewhere Else, right, yeah. on a Saturday, and 
the great Freddie Aitken played with St. Johnson, the winger, left winger. Yeah. And my pal Wattie Logie, they, they, they were in the pub having a beer. And they had just played with Oakley Juniors. And they said, I hadn't played football for two years. He says, Jim, won't be coming in and help my suit. We're needing a couple of players. I says, I've not played for two years. No, no. He says, come on. <laughs> I says, no. Well, the next day, the manager at Oakley come up to my house. A wee guy, Tommy Wilkson, sadly deceased. A great football man, Tommy. Yeah. And he says to me, Jim, come on. I says, Tommy. <laughs> I says, I'll tell you what, I'll come out on Thursday. I'll come out to training on Thursday. And on the Tuesday, I ran for Lockerley, Kelty, <laughs> where, where uh, my wife to be stayed. And I was knackered. I was knackered, man. And I went along the Thursday. It was a wee football thing. And I played on the Saturday, the 162. And uh, I signed for them. And they won, they won the five junior league two years in the trot. There, we won the league two years in the trot, Oakley Juniors. And uh, they, they made me the. The manager, I was a player coach and I got the manager's job, but only for about two months. Then I went to Kelly Hearts, Derek. Kelly, because you know what, I got what they did? Guess what my wages were for Kelly Hearts? Nowhere near what? Five pounds, Derek, worth of scratch cards. No way. You know the scratch cards, and if you win it, right, 25 pence, and I got five pounds worth, right? <laughs> and and I, for a whole season, I never won a thing. Never won one penny after them. That was my wages. And the re- I had a four Capri, and they says, right, we'll respray your four Capri. Right? And at that time, at Kelly Cross, Alexander's bus garage. Well, the spray painter for the bus garage sprayed my car. So it was bus, gar- it was bus red. <laughs> Every time I stopped, the wee bell went off. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I got. Uh, so as a manager the first year, eh, we finished second. Paul yeah. Beath won it and we finished second top. And then uh, then I went to Cowden Beath yeah. at 26. We, we uh, Andy Rowland, ex Dundee United, Tom Fairman. I was assistant manager. But Andy resigned after three months, and that was me. Yeah. And then I got the then I got the youth team at Tom Fairman at 26. Yeah. yeah. I was 26 year old. Aye, and then, I mean, the senior team, but were you 28, 29 when you, was it Tam for Saif? 29. 29. Pat Stan was uh, the manager of Dunfermline and they gave me the youth team. Uh-huh. With a guy called uh, Doogie Johnson, two years to the under 18s. And then Pan, Pat went to Hibs and Tam for Saif and Carmi Murray come to Dunfermline and they gave me the reserve team to look after. Uh-huh. So I looked after the reserve team and then Tam, got, uh, Tam lost his job. A yeah. great boy. A great boy, Tom Forsyth. was great talking about football and yeah. really down-to-earth, honest guy. Eh? Yeah. And um, it was a pleasure working with him, to be honest. And uh, the um, Tom got the sack. Uh-huh. And they put me they put me uh, temporary in charge for three games. Eh? Uh, I lost one, drew two. And you want to know what I think I got the Dunferno job? Because a lot of folk, a lot of folk applied for the job Eric, eh? Yeah. A lot of people. Eh, and eh, during that temporary in charge, I went in on the Sunday and the phone rang on the Sunday. I was sitting in the office looking through the, the books and everything, football players or whatever. And it was the vice chairman. And I'm saying, a Sunday, what is the phone in the park for, eh? Yeah. And I picked up the phone, hello there. It was a guy called Doc Yellerly. Oh, is that you, Jim? I says, aye. He says, what are you doing? I says, I'm just looking at some players eh, for the future. Eh? Well, that was on a Sunday. On the Monday, I got the job. Eh? Wow. 50 quid a week, Derek. That's a lot more than a, a £5 scratch card, didn't it? <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. 50 quid a week and six litres of petrol, Derek. And I couldn't drive. I didn't have a car or nothing. Six litres of petrol. I had more petrol in the garage than what the garage had. <laughs> <laughs> So here, Jim, that's that's a that's a, a very young age to be taking a, a, a senior football team. You know what I mean? What did you? Were you? You're a quite a charismatic guy. Did, did you sort of take it all in your stride? Because there have been players that were older than you, wouldn't they be in, in the dressing room? No, there were, there were quite a few players older than me, Derek. You're right. And uh, at that time in Scottish football, Derek, there were 38 teams. Yeah. In the whole of Scotland, and Dunfermline were 34th. 
Van het interval. Voor terug te hey, Nu, remember, 10 years before that, they're in, they're in the Scottish Cup finals and they're in European, playing the best teams in Europe. What happened? And then they're 34th. Yeah. My first team talk then, I walked in, right? And all the boys are sitting there. Some of them were older than me. And, and they'd been getting abuse all the time for the punters. And, yeah. Because they weren't winning, obviously. To be fair, the fourth year, no winning many games. So I went in and I said, right, lads, we're 34th top. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a nice way to say, hey, this is not good enough, lads. Eh? <laughs> you know, instead of saying, right, lads, we're crap, we're fourth bottom, I said, right, lads, we're 34th top. Yeah. yeah. Prepared. And they all laughed, eh? Yeah, fantastic. I got ready 11 players, Derek, at the end of the season. Wow. 29-year-old, I said, no. I'm going to build a right team here and give them some pride in the town. Yeah. And I got rid of 11 players and I brought boys in and uh, it was great. Yeah. What was the secret to success there, Jim? Because it was just a sort of upward trend. When you managed to get them all the way up and it was yeah. for such a young first man year, to be able to do that, it's incredible. The first year we finished third, Derek. Yeah. We just lost out the last day for promotion Aye. my first season. Uh -huh. Then the next season, we won the second division. The next season, we got promotion to the Premier League for the yeah. first time. And that's when they changed it to three teams coming down, eh? Yeah. And then the following season, we got, well, that season, we got relegated. Then the following season, we um, we won the first division. And then uh, we stayed up in the Premier League. What's it, what, what, what was the secret, Derek? Good players, eh? Signing good players. Thanks that's so. what I did. I broke... I brought better players in, therefore I'm improving the team. And then when we were getting better, I brought good players in again and the players got kept in their toes. So uh, that's that was my secret, eh? And you know, I looked after the players, Derek, eh? Yeah. I looked after the players. They were first and foremost. Uh, uh, they were, I think they feel really important, eh? And I got the town behind them and I got them behind the town, Derek. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, it was a two-way thing. Uh -huh. You know, it's okay being a community club, Derek, but I made them a club in the community, if yeah. you understand the difference. Yeah, absolutely. They were a club in the community. The boys, all the boys, that's when Watson, John Watson, Nora McCarthy, all the boys came to the front eh, and says, right, come on. And see, when you're having a hard time then, the punters are behind you because they know that you, you, you care about them, Derek, and that's what I did. Eh? Yeah. Uh, another talk. Plus, uh, sorry, Derek. Yeah, another top player. We've had him on uh, Ian Westwater. You brought him in uh, uh, to be the to be the goalie. Uh, another great player for you, Jim. Uh, Ian, I saw Ian down at Green at Morton. Yeah. In the reserve game, and he was playing. And all I could hear all throughout the ninety minutes was Ian Westwater shouting to his teammates, shouting, shouting. Aye. And uh, he didn't have much to do that night, but you saw what he did do. He did it properly. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I signed him. I think I'm not sure what I paid there, okay? I think I gave Ian a bigger signing on fee than I paid for him. Yeah. So I, I don't know what he got, but uh, for Ian Westwater, I he got a wee financial kick, but it was all about playing first team, and he great. I think he's played the most games for a Dunfermline goalie yeah. in the club's history, yeah. which is a tribute to himself. Yeah, absolutely. And he was a good goalie. Yeah. It turned another, out to be a good goalie. Another couple of players I wanted to talk about, um, when you signed uh, Isfan Cosma um, mm -hmm. and then Giorgio Boyle for, for Bordeaux, he, he, he didn't say a funny story when you, they bought them both. And I think the girl in the, the general office thought uh, you signed Giorgio Boyle, some uh, foreign player, but it was a wee boy for, for Belfast. But um, what were these two guys like, Jim? Well, it's, it's one cost my 49 caps for Hungary, Derek. Yeah. That's his all, eh? His one was not the exact, or sorry, not the complete team player. Uh-huh. He, he had individual skills that the, the other boys didn't run, but he ran like a gazelle, eh? Yeah. A great stride and great, one of the best hat-tricks I've ever seen in, in football, Derek, against St. Mirren. Campbell Money was in goals. Uh -huh. A left footer, a right footer, and a header, all within the space of 13 minutes. Yeah. Class. Yeah. But a great guy. For me, he's a great guy. Eh? Yeah. And uh, I remember when I uh, when I went to Bordeaux, 
uh, with a guy called Blair Morgan, one of the directors, who was friendly with about Didier Quicu, who played for France in 66. He was in the French squad down at Wembley. He was a general manager, so they were doing business about property and whatever, and that's how we got the introduction. Yeah. And we went across and uh, we had to speak in English to the French translator who spoke to the Frenchman in French who then spoke in Hungarian to this one. So Christ knows how we arrived at a deal. I don't know, Danny. I just kept saying, yeah, okay, we, no, I. And we got him. And he was great, great character. Okay. A funny, uh, one of these pranksters, eh? Yeah. He, he would have been the Alan McCoy to the dressing room, eh? Oh, would he? And George ah. Bell. George Bell never scored in his first 17 games there for Dunfermline. Uh-huh. Now, why would you get a game, if, uh, 17 games, no, a striker, no scoring goals? But see the assists, Derek. See the contribution he made. And see his first goal for Dunfermline against Hamilton, uh, uh, at Hamilton's Park, Douglas Park, the old ground. What a goal it was. And then after that, he just... But he made so many goals for his teammates. Eh? A great player. Yeah. A really, really good player. Under... Uh, some people undervalued his contribution. They know me because yeah. he played every week for me. Yeah, he was me a, George, a top player. And, and I mean, that's fact, was, Liverpool. Not I mean that's that. That's how big a player he was. Went 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 to Liverpool. with us up there at the time. And then <laughs> we played Rangers in the semi final, uh, the League Cup at Hamden. First time we'd go back to Hamden since 1968, yeah. and we got hammered five nothing. Eh? Yeah. And uh, Graham Sooner said to me, Jim, what's the score with uh, Isfah? But at that time, you had to be in the country for two years uh, before you could transfer him to another team. Eh? Yeah. So obviously, Graham Sooner went to Liverpool, and we, uh, I think it was 625,000 or something. To, to, but it was, it's a strange because with them, Fairman, they were just a non as hard working, good. Good football players, there. Good football yeah. players. Never take that away from them. Yeah. But when you go to Liverpool, you're playing with Rush, and Aldridge, and all the superstars. Ah, and cool. this one just, this one didn't he quite handle it, eh? Yeah. And he was four Liverpool's worst player ever. <laughs> I, I, I found it hard to. Player. I found it hard to take, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's a hard. Yeah, he did great for Dunfermline. Great, and so did George Bell, Derek. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The East Enders song in '86, Jim. What was what was going on there? What was all that about? Oh, <laughs> well, it was our hundredth anniversary, Derek. Yeah, right. Our hundredth anniversary, and it was East Enders' first anniversary of the show, the East Enders show. Yeah. So one of the directors and his son wrote the our East. We the boys from East End Park. We've been on the go. Yeah, I went to number one. Uh, went to one, number one in Zimbabwe, I think. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were buying them for earrings, Derek, you know what I'm saying? And uh, thank God that's all changed. But no, we, we, we wrote the song, and uh, this is true, Derek, right? We went across to Edinburgh to the studios to record it. Yeah. And then we got invited down to Pebble Mall at one. But when we're recording the show, the, the boys are looking at the, the song sheet and singing for the notes. Pebble Mon went, Pebble Mullet one went to sing it live, so the boys didn't know the words. So going down in the bus, Derek, right? This is my terrible, my terrible <laughs> thoughts how we get them to learn the, the song. I put one of these blue movies on the bus, Derek, right? And the boys are all watching it, then I'll switch it off. Right, lads, you'll get to watch the rest of it if you learn the song, right? <laughs> so they started learning the, the verses and then kept putting it on and off and on and off. And we learned the song. And, and then the next day at Pebble Mall, we stayed down and uh, us, Alan Evans, who uh, played with Aston Villa, him and Ken McNaught, yeah. uh, double set and a half. Alan was uh, t- uh, the assistant manager. Uh, and I asked him if he can train at their ground after Pebble Mall. And he says, right, so we're going to train down there at the Villa training ground. And uh, we're in the studios, right? And what we were going to do is put the put the, the, the disc on. The disc, the people, the punters, 
listening would hear the the recording and we would be singing along. Aye. No bother. If you came, we would just go sing along with the, the disc. Well, the musicians complained because we were do, doing them maybe a job, eh? <laughs> so the musician says, right, no. So they say, right, we, we had to do it live then, okay? Away. We had to do it live. I'm saying, oh, no. <laughs> so we're, we're going, and the, your musician played it, and it was two, do we hear the boys from East End? Or, we hear the boys from East End? And I said, no, okay, this is going to be a nightmare. Eh? So the floor manager come on, Derek. Right, lads, this is what's going to happen, right? I'm going to give you a shout. 60 seconds. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. 10 seconds. Then I'm going to go with my fingers. Nine. Uh, five. Four. Well, she's right. We'll run through that. 60, 30, 20, 10, five. Well, when she said five seconds, Stevie Morrison, excuse me, but this is the truth. Stevie Morrison farted, right? A loud fart, Derek. I'm no joking. <laughs> I was trying to kill him. I was trying to kill him. The police were all killed. Oh, I was a loud, loud thing. <laughs> One of the funniest things, you know, the boys were killing themselves laughing. Oh, Derek. See when it comes down to the right thing, Derek. Eh? And she got to five. I got a smile on my face. I says, you dare, Stevie. I'll, honestly, you dare. And we got through, Derek. How we got through that? And I got booked on a Saturday, Derek, after that. We're playing uh, Ray Throvers at, 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 at Starts Park. And on the Friday, I don't know if it was Hazel or Chet Young or whoever it was, says, well, Jim, will you be singing in these tenders tomorrow at Starts Park? I says, if we're one and two nothing, if we're one and two nothing, I'm going to get out and sing. Well, John Watson scored the second goal, eh? And I'm out on the track. And I'm 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 conducting the East, the the Dolphins of what we uh, well, I'm not saying that. Eh? Well, I got booked. The referee in 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 sight in trouble. No way. Really. Oh, he booked me. Oh, Christ. <laughs> and we lost two goals today. We we drew two two. <laughs> but uh, Billy Herbank scored the two goals. But oh, great man. That's great cool. laugh. Yeah, Westy was speaking about it as well. He says it was some laugh get, doing that. I mean, it's, it's it's absolutely cracking stuff to look back on, and it's just uh, oh, funny, funny uh, man. Um, uh, hey, Derek, it was a great team spirit. The boys were up for it. We got promotion that year again. Yeah, terrific man. Yeah, uh, you'd leave Jim in uh, nineteen ninety. The fans were were furious, of course. They, they had that. They, uh, I think four thousand of them or something were protesting it. Uh, you. you Obviously, being moved upstairs, what it looked like that must have been tough to take. I was, um, I knew there was a wee problem, a wee problem. I was on holiday in, in at Rhodes, and as a fast country, there was a guy called Michael Dridzik, yeah, Yugoslavian player. And we were going to sign him, and I did a bit of homework. And uh, uh, there was a Yugoslavian scout that sent players to. Tynecastle, you know, a couple of Yugoslavian players, a big striker, I can't mind his name. So I phoned him up, we stayed in Kirkcaldy, and I was speaking to him and asked him, he says, look, Jim, here's the number of the, the manager of the Yugoslavian team. Give him a phone, so I did. He spoke OK English, and I spoke to him, he says, basically he was telling me, no, I, I, if it was me, I wouldn't do it. So I, I relayed that to the board. But when I was in, when I was in Rhodes, I got a, a fact through saying that they'd signed him. And I says, oh, oh. And when I went back, that's when it all kicked off. Yeah. And uh, I broke my heart a bit. Yeah. Broke my heart a bit, the team. But I was never going to take the job that they offered me. Never, never. And, uh, oh, no, nah, the fans were brilliant. Uh, four 4,000 walked up the high street. Shoot, shoot Adams from the big country and his son Callum. Aye. They were at the front of the march. I got a phone call for the chief inspector of police, Graham Bennett, uh, saying, Jim, do me a favour, don't come into Dunfermline today. If you come into Dunfermline, there'll be a riot. He says, so then they do it, and I didn't. But then they had another demonstration on the Sunday at the public park. There was about 2,000 turned up on the Sunday. Yeah. So I went and talked to them. I told them not to boycott the games. I says, look, what's happened's happened, and they, we've got to move on. Yeah. 
it's, uh, it's, it's a crazy decision back then. You, you went to, um, uh, you had a wee spell at Montrose. I was looking at, I was doing some research for this, Jim, and I noticed you were on St. and Greavesy, doing a wee bit of poetry uh, on St. and Greavesy when you were at Montrose. Uh, another bit of fun. I, I can't I mean do. I can't remember mean, doing it at Montrose. Uh, I did it at Dunf- my first Saints and Graves poem was when Dunfermline, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm backtracking here, uh, when Dunfermline played Rangers uh-huh. in the Scottish Cup, soon as revolution and all this. And I said to the players, I'll come back to Montrose, Derek, but sorry about that, but yeah, uh, my first poem, yeah. uh, and I said to the players, look, guys, I can't pay you. I can't pay, pay you like them, uh, the Rangers players. I can't give you the, the same money that the Rangers players are getting, but I can treat you like them. Yeah. And I took them up to the old course in St Andrews on the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, we, we, we played we beat Rangers 2-0 on the Saturday. And Jim White, for Saints and Greaves, they come up for an interview, eh? and it was, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you know the dangers... Each time you go and play the Rangers, Dunfermline two, the Rangers one. What a thrill when we beat the soonest man! <laughs> and we won two nothing. They didn't score, so it mucked my poem up. <laughs> <laughs> but did, but that's when it started, Derek. How did you, did you get any of the poetry, Jim? Was that something you, you always done in the on the side? I won. I won a poetry competition when I was at primary school oh. about Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. I, 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 I did a poem. I won a, I won a competition yeah. at the primary school. About, if you never fight, you'll be all right. Eh? Yeah. His, the jam's name was Cassius Clay, and his home was amongst the hay. His opponent was called Sonny Liston. He won his fights by sticking his fist in. <laughs> and it went on like that. And I said, So never fight, and you'll be all right. That's class. And, uh, well, that was my first. I was only about, I was only ten year old. Eh? But I used to do poems. I, I, I got asked a lot of times to speak at, at funerals. Uh, there, you know, Gary Riddle, uh, yeah. Gary Thompson, Nori McCarthy, and I just I kind of do it. So I would write a poem about them and give it for somebody to read. Yeah. Because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah, but I, I, but I've I, I come up with some classics, uh, uh, Derek, about the poems. Yeah, and some funny things, uh, did he? I'm well, not that, telling that you one, that one. That clip I seen him in Trojia, a, a, a pair of frilly knickers or something, and you were, uh, you just seen a, a, a cut, a cut back to the studio, and you see uh, Greavesy holding up a, a frilly pair of knickers and all that. It was quite funny. Uh, well, I can't even mind that. They weren't the mine anyway, Derek. <laughs> I was at Inverness before that, Derek. I went up to Inverness before that. Yeah, before Inverness Montrose. Thistle back then. Sorry? It'd be Inverness Thistle back then, wasn't it? Inverness Thistle, Highland League. Jock yeah. MacDonald was the chairman. And they come down to Glasgow and we had a great chat. And I said, I'll come up, Jock. I'll give him my best shot. And yeah. I was getting paid through Tomatin Whiskey. They were paying my wages, Tomatin Whiskey. He was the he was the managing director of Tomatin Whiskey. Yeah. And I went up and uh, I lost my first two games against Cove Rangers, 4 nothing through in Cove. And then the second game was 5 nothing uh, against Bobby Wilson's Ross County. Yeah. So nine against and four, uh, no, nothing for and nine against. That was it. my first two games. I said, what the hell am I doing here, man? <laughs> and I signed young Willie Callaghan and Willie Spence from down here. Uh-huh. Uh, well, he was a Scottish junior international and Willie had signed him for Dunfermline and uh, he was playing with Kelly Hearts at the time. I took him up and I won my next 10 games. 10 out of 10, 30 points out of 30. Wow. And which is great. And uh, we beat Ross County, won nothing in my 10th game. So that was a progress for getting beat 5 9 to turn it into a 1 9 victory. Yeah. That was a progress. And uh, I did all right up at Inverness, actually. Yeah. I did. I got them to the cup final and uh, uh, Carly B. Us, they were strong. Ross County and Carly Thistle were the two strong teams. Yeah. But I was starting to make progress, and then Montrose come in. Yeah. Ryan Keith at Montrose. Yeah. I went then. I went down to Glebe Park. Didn't do well there, though, Derek. I didn't do well. You know, I didn't have my most successful time. Yeah, Brian Keith was a good chairman, eh? Really good chairman. He looked after me and. Uh, 
happen, but I just couldn't get the team playing. Yeah. I got the youth team to the semi-final of the BP Youth Cup. Les Bar was the manager. And then uh, that was it. I just says, no, I've had enough. I'm, I'm not doing well here. I'm taking money for him under false pretenses. And I just says, right. And he was wanting me to stay at the end of the season. I says, chairman, no. I'm, I, I can't. And I went away. That was me. I thought that was my football finished. Yeah. Wow. And Meadow Bank come calling and, and I think... It started a, a, a crazy journey there when, when, when you went there, of course. George McNeil was speaking at a dinner in Adewell, Adewell a Miners Club. Yeah, I know it, yeah. And Davy, Davy Cooper was there just before he died, Yeah, actually. And Bill Hunter, the chairman of Meadowbank come Livingston, he was there. He was a guest for a Q&A. And uh, I said to George McNeil, my pal, I said, George, give me a good build-up. They're looking for a manager. Give me a good build-up, George. I'll maybe get the joke. That'll get me started again. You know, George, he was brilliant. You know, Jim, what a great job and winning the first division <laughs> twice and all that. Well, the, the, the chairman says, Jim, I'll be coming to see me tomorrow. He says, aye, aye, I'll come along. So I got the job, uh, Meadow Bank. But they were a great bunch. Forget Livingston, Meadow Bank Thistle. All the boys that were at Meadowbank at the time, great. Yeah. Great. Dan Graham, he, he was uh, uh, the cooker people. What's the big cookers? Aga cookers. Yeah. He was moving Aga cookers Saturday morning, coming <laughs> to Livingston and to, to play centre half. Wow. Gordon, Gordon McLeod, Poodle, Jason Young, Lee Bailey, uh, Mark Duffy. Grant Tierney, Stuart Williamson, great boys, man. Yeah. Great. But what was the feeling then, Jim, when uh, they obviously they changed the morph into, into Livingston? Were you were you were you sad to see that at the time? Because of course that they'd been in the league for, for a number of years. Terry Christie was the best manager uh, for uh, Meadowbank yeah. history. Yeah. Fantastic. What he achieved. Good players, Grant Tierney, Peter Godfrey, uh, the boy Jim McQueen and Golks, the striker, what was his name? I can't mind. Uh, Adrian Sprott. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some great players. Yeah. And they, they actually should have got to the Premier League. And then they changed it. And, and sadly, they didn't get there. So yeah. Terry Christie uh, was a fantastic manager for Middlebank as well. And Stennis. Then Stennis Muir. Uh, but I think it was the right decision. To, the fans, the Meadowbank fans showed a lot of uh, animosity, animosity uh, uh, leaving uh -huh. uh, the Commonwealth Stadium. But if you think about it, there was no other senior team at that level in West Lothian. West Lothian is a big place. Yeah. You know, and you're the, the, you're the senior team in West Lothian still are. Uh, so for me, it wasn't a, it wasn't a rocket science. Hey, go, and yeah. then they changed the motto, something like Sergio and Lucy was rising to the light for Meadowbank Fisco Latin to Livingston Football Club West Lothian. So that that got the fans saying, "Hey, come on, this is great. We're uh, this is your home team." Yeah, and uh, we went through. We played at Meadowbank actually. Till November, October or November, because the stadium was not finished. Yeah. The first game at the stadium was Easterland, and we drew one one. We didn't win a game at, uh, at Livingston, at Almondville for for three or four games. Yeah. And then we started winning. We won the league that year. We won the third division. Yeah. We won it. And uh, and, and moving Brilliant. to Ammonville, the, the brand new shiny stadium and all that, Jim, uh, the, the club was on, of course, that, that upward trajectory as well. But it, it must have been fun to be a part of. Fantastic. For the third division, right through to finish third top, Derek. Aye. Yeah. Celtic Rangers, Livingston, qualify for Europe. And then the next year, they win the League Cup. Davy Hay was a great part of that as well. You can't take anything away from Davy Hay. John Robertson, Alan Preston, that was all the, the boys in the staff, eh? Yeah. They, they were all part of the staff. Yeah. 
That that season you fit you went up, then you finished third in behind Rangers and Celtic. That's it's absolutely ridiculous, really, when you think of where you came from. Is that up there with one of your, your greatest achievements, Jim? Oh. Do that, Derek. There's nobody else done it, Derek. Eh? Aye, yeah. We've no done that. Hearts come up and finished fourth. Uh, somebody else, I think another team come up for the the first division and finished fourth, but nobody's come up and finished third. Aye, they've never finished third. Uh, just uh, Celtic Rangers Livingston it just sounds amazing Derek yeah. and all credit to the boys and see what see, see the difference Derek I learned I learned from Dunfermline because when I went up to the Premier League with Dunfermline the first time uh, I kept a lot of the players who had done marvellous but they, they weren't just quite ready for the, the Premier League and that's when I brought players like say Esvan Cosma to Dunfermline, George O'Boyle to Dunfermline, Davy Iron and Stuart Rafferty, Paul Smith, players like that to Dunfermline, Doug Rugby, and then we stayed up. And I learned from that at Livingston. When I went through the leagues, uh, uh, you know, before we went to the Premier League, I'd brought in Marvin Andrews, yeah. uh, Davy Fernandez, Stephen Tosh, Barry Wilson, Davy Bingham. Uh, Kino, uh, Rubio, yeah. uh, Zouza, you know, uh, I'm on, yeah. great boys. Okay. So we were ready. Yeah. We were ready to stay up. Yeah. The, Rub- the Rubio Andrews partnership was something else, Jim. They, they, they were a cracking pair, weren't you, for you? Oscar Rubio did wonders for Martin Andrews. Oscar Rubio played in the Spanish Cup final for Real Madrid when he was 19. <laughs> how do you uh, then it, how? Then we found him through a guy called a guy called he was a he was a agent for Bahi in Barcelona. Right, okay. What was his yeah. name a great boy. He was actually a boxing referee. He liked boxing. Uh, he got Fernandez, and uh, he got uh, Javier Broto, Sanchez Javier Broto. Yeah, good goal. Um, what was his name? Christ. He's a great boy. And uh-huh. he, he got all these boys. I went up to I went up to see Adrian play Dundee United, Derek, uh-huh. up at Tanadice in the Cup. And I was going up to see Javier Sanchez Broto, the goalkeeper. And this wee boy up front kept on jinking his way through. Twice he was through in the goalie. And the goalie made good saves, eh? And then the second half, he got sent off. But I went back and I said to Dominic Keane, I said, Dominic, Bro is a good goalie and we've got to sign him, but the wee boy, I don't know what, is Bro. Yeah. Is, sorry, is a Fernandez. Absolutely fantastic for yeah. Livingston. He didn't do great at Celtic because, again, like the, the Cosmo thing, yeah. he's, he's got to Celtic with Larson and all these great players. That's hard. And it was, it was just difficult to, to get a run in the team. But okay, 1.2 million I got after a year. Yeah. Gone for nothing, 1.2 million. Cracking bit of business. A good business, Derek, yeah. Absolutely. Big Marvin Andrews, uh, Jim, he's uh, one of a kind. Um, I guess he must have lightened up the, the dressing room a bit. <laughs> Marvin was a character, eh? Yeah. Very strong beliefs, Marvin had. Yeah. You had to deal with Marvin uh, in quite a subtle way, you know. Marvin didn't take to... Uh, the shouting and balling, they didn't like that. And we fell out because I was shouting at balling at one or two of his mates, eh? and he was sticking up for his mates, and he thought I was a bad person eh? because I was shouting. I did me. He wouldn't have taken to Alec Ferguson, I wouldn't have thought. No, no, um, no, no absolutely. <laughs> quite a few, but, but uh, he gave you everything, eh? Yeah. Great in the air. Great in the air. And, uh, you know, he was okay in the ground, but not... No terrific. Yeah. But, you know, he had a big presence about him. And Rubio, Ru- Rubio was a steadying factor for me. Yeah. He was, he was a crack. The two of them were solid, Derek. Yeah. Solid defenders. Yeah. Rubio was a great defender. Aye. Hard. Yeah. Hard I boy. It was, it was some uh, acquisition managed to get him in. See, when you moved to the, the director of football, Jim, was that something that you were quite happy to do at that, at that point and let uh, David Hay take over the, the running of the team? No. No, Davy wasn't happy either. 
Yeah. Uh, Dominic, Dominic got influenced about a guy called Massimo or something. A Brazilian or. guy? No, he was Brazilian. Yeah. The Brazilian boy who knew who knew uh, uh, Ronaldo and he knew the Brazilian players. They were rubbish. Facts. And, and honestly, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if he gets to know about this, but he wasn't very good. No. He wasn't very good. And Dominic wanted him to... And at that time... Uh, no, making changes at that time. I, don't, I didn't know if it was financial pressure. And I just says, no, I'm not staying. That's why I went back to Dunfermline. Aye. No. Of course, when you went back there, you, you managed to... You managed the great escape, didn't you? When when you kept them up that season, was it uh, was it oh four oh five? Was it is that the season you managed to keep them up with three games? Yeah. Beer? The uh, Davy Jimmy Calderwood went to Aberdeen. Aye, with yeah. Jimmy Nichol and Sandy Clark. Yeah, and Davy he got the job uh, because they had done such a good job uh, with the, the teams before, and I got them great with Davy, so I recommend them for the job. And uh, he came in, but Davy was the first to put his hand up and say, if when they go to St. Jim, it's no worked out, you know, um, we're bottom of the league, so I'm getting what I expected. So um, Davy left on the Monday, and on the Tuesday, they gave me the job with three games to go, and they're bottom of the league, Derek. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Uh, that was worse than being, that was worse than being 34th top, eh? <laughs> you're, it was because you're you're bottom of the Premier League, Aye. and so the, and the directors were all planning for their budget for the first division, eh? Yeah. So a lot of people were going to lose their job, Derek. So they says Jim take over for the last three games. So I says, well, three games. I looked at the position. I says, we can still stay up. We can still stay up. So why why think about anything different? So I went in. It wasn't a training or anything. It wasn't. A, there weren't any people say, oh, they're no fit and all this rubbish. It was a mental thing. It was confidence. So I go into their heads, Derek. Eh? Yeah. I go into their heads. The first game was Dundee. And I, I really... Them. Sorry? You hammered them, didn't you? Five nothing, eh? Yeah. Jim Duffy, a good pal of mine, Jim. And uh, he says, I don't know what the fuss is all about. Jim Lushman's not playing tomorrow. <laughs> Four <laughs> nothing doing, he was saying, oh, Christ. I should have shot my face, eh? We won five nothing, and then the next week, Derek. I don't know if you mind. We were playing Dundee United up at Tannadice, and Inverness were playing Dundee. Yeah. At, a, at Dens Park. Now the four teams who were in trouble was Livingston, Dundee, Dundee United, and a, a Dunfermline, mm-hmm. and then the paper. There's a photo of the four managers. One of these is going to go relegate. And that was the, that, the story is about the four teams. Uh, Dundee United's history, Dunfermline's history, and, uh, Dundee's history. One of these four teams are getting down. Eh? And then we went up on the Sunday. And, uh, I just gave them a, a, a chat about... Uh, I, 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 I wish I could tape some of the things I had said, Derek. Aye, yeah. All through my career. Yeah. Because it wasn't something that I'd written down. And something that had just come out. It would come out. And, and I did team talks about Martin Luther King. I did wow. team talks about David and, David and Goliath. Yeah. Martin Luther King when you're playing Celtic, David and Goliath when you're playing Rangers. See? And we won both of the games. See? And the players, I'm relaxing them, but telling them a true story about... Poof. And then I, I come up with some stupid story. And we won one, nothing. Scored in the eighth and ninth minute, Gary Mace. Well, the place just erupted. The game got held up 10 minutes at the start, and then the fans just went mental. Aye. And so did that. It was just fun. That was six goals, four nothing against. We had to get beat 7 nothing in the last game. Yeah. And I, I, I got, it was funny because we're in the dressing room, the players were so excited. They had never won two games all season, and they'd never won an away game for weeks, for months. So they won two games on the trunk there again. Yes. And then the fourth official come in, Mr. Leishman, uh, Mr. Dougal, shoot Dougal, was the, re- Mr. the referee, Mr. Dougal's want to speak to you. So I went, I went through his room. They shoot my hand, this is Jim. I had just three games ago against Livingston. What a difference. 
and your attitude never. I said, thanks, Stuart, very much. Jim, I've got to report you. Uh -huh. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've got to report you to the SFA. I said, what for? Over exuberant celebration. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. Honestly, honestly. I'd never heard of this before, Derek. Eh? Over exuberant. Yeah, the match commander thought you were inciting the, uh, the Dundee United fans be doing your aeroplane. I said, Stuart, I've just saved. I've just saved 12 jobs in my colleagues, my workmates, office staff, everyone. I've just saved 12 jobs. What do you want me to do? I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. I'm ecstatic. He says, sorry, Jim, it's, you've been reported. I says, well, he says, you've got anything, anything to say, Jim? I says, aye. Tell the March commander to go and take up his cell. <laughs> Thank God he didn't report that to the match commander, Derek. <laughs> I got a phone call. I got a phone call for Stuart going back down the road. Eh? Aye. Eh, I was on the Queensway and he says, Jim, no, they, they've seen sense and you're fine. I've not report that. I says, that's great. Aye. Thanks, yeah. So that was amazing two games. We got beat four and the third game against Kilmarnock, but, Aye, but the, the two games are amazing, Derek. Aye. That yeah. was an amazing. That was like one in the league. Yeah. The league of four, Derek. A league of four, and we we talked to league of four. Aye, especially if the clubs are on the line, Jim, as well. It's I mean, it's 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 so much pressure and all that, and folks' livelihoods. And I mean, it must have been so, such emotion after that. Well, Derek, they've got mortgages as well, Derek. Eh? Aye, yeah, they've got family as well. These people, and uh, I was delighted. And then next year, the next year, Derek, I get some to the cup final. I know. Unbelievable. I was going to talk about that, Jim. I mean, of course, you're playing Celtic. It's always a, a tough ask, but you had a, a number of injuries that day as well, so you're, you're always up against it, weren't you? Well, I was actually, last, a week past Saturday, I was speaking to him, Noel Hunt. Noel Hunt and Mark, Bur Mark Burchill were my two strikers, and yes, I think Mark Burchill, the second part of the season, when I teamed him up with Noel Hunt, Mark had scored something like 14 goals. Yeah, it's on fire. But, but Noel Hunt took the hit from me, he took the hit from him, and the mark was that quick and a good finisher. And the two of them and were up at St Andrews, and no Hunt was jumping up and doing a bed playing trampolines, and he did his back in. Could have killed him. Darren Young, honestly, playing trampolines. Really, me? If it was in the circus, yeah, honestly. So mm. he was out. Darren Young scored the, the, the goal in the semi final, where apparently broke his toe. So they were two crucial players for us. Eh? Two crucial players. And the boys I had to bring in weren't, they, weren't they as good, that's for sure. You must and when you're playing Celtic, that. you need your best. You need your best guys. Eh? And you need everybody eh, clicking in. And I went out hoping, hoping. There. And we were doing great. Aye. 41 minute. Alan McGregor was his goalie on loan for Rangers. Him, yeah. Uh, he was great. He had a great season for us. And Aaron Labonte, the right back, the collided, the ball broke loose, and whoever it was uh, just tucked it in the net. Eh? Yeah. 41 minutes. If we'd held them at half time, hey, I'm not saying we would have beat them, eh? but it changes it a wee bit. Eh? No pressure on us. Hey, we've done great, lads. We've not lost a goal in 45 minutes. Everybody's expecting us to get hammered. But the second half, once they score, you're the game's done, eh? Aye, it's, yeah, it's Talking about McGregor there, uh, Jim, I mean, of course, he had, a, he had a great year with you on, on loan that year, but are you yeah. nice to see him still going and still uh, still doing it? I think he's getting named player of the year this season. He was that good. He's, he's, he's matured. Yeah. He's matured. He makes some great saves at crucial times. OK, Rangers won the league, but you go back and, and look at the TV and look at the saves, at crucial saves at times, yeah. To keep them in the game, or or uh, to stop them going to go behind, Poof, some great saves. He's, he's done great. Well done. Yeah. Well was done it, to him. I bet, I bet he talks. That's it's not the same as winning the league or winning the league cup or winning the Scottish cup, Derek. Yeah. But when you go, when you go with a team like Dunfermline and get to a cup final, that is a tremendous achievement. Yeah. That is a tremendous achievement for Al McGregor. You hear a uh, player saying he's dead vocal and he, and he he makes sure that he's heard and he, he berates players. Was he like that at Dunfermline as well, Jim? Was he a vocal character, he, he, remember? 
Oh, he commanded his area. He was a yeah. good goalie. You can yeah. see the potential, but I can't remember. Rangers had two good goalies with them. Uh, I somebody. I think the Kloss and uh, Vatrus, I think, at that point. So, you know, um, Alan thought he was third choice at that time, so he won't. Uh, Aye. He was actually going to leave them and sign for somebody else, but uh, luckily uh, he came to them firmly. And uh, I can't remind you that, uh, that, that he was very vocal about that. But he was commanding. He, 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 he would sort the defenders out, eh? Yeah. I like you say, I think he's matured. He's matured a lot now. Oh, he's a good goalie. He's a Aye. good goalie. Yeah. You, leaving football, well, you get you get, um, you get get awarded by an MBE uh, the year after um, by the Queen. Talk us through that. You must have been proud as punch when you, when you got that letter through. Well, Derek, I couldn't believe it, eh? Aye. The 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 financial controller, uh, he actually opened the letter. <laughs> I'm saying it's, it's got it's got from the palace, came Buckingham Palace on it, and it's addressed to me, and he opened it. Eh? I'm saying, hey, and I thought it was a wind up there. Eh? I thought somebody either wind me up here, or somebody. So I just pulled on my desk and I took it home and I showed my wife up there. And I said, look. She says, no, this, look, this, look at all the, all the stamps. Nobody would duplicate them. I said, Jesus, God. So I filled it in, saying that I'd gladly accept and everything. One of the proudest days in my life, Derek. Right. My daughter was there, my son was there, my wife was there, my son-in-law was there, and we, we went down to the palace. Yeah. And uh, I remember, you go up the steps and they go to the, the big room, the big ballroom where the orchestra is. Yeah. And all the guests are sitting. And we went to another room, one of the, the which was quite a big room, and all the photographs, Rembrandts and Van Gogh's and constables on the wall. And, and the, then this guy, the, the, I think the Queen's Lord Lieutenant, or whoever it is, comes in with his big sword and he's talking to everybody. Blah, 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 yeah, 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 don't be scared, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like this one, guys. Then you get put into a group of eight, and I was just sitting with a group, so we had to wait a while. And the rest of the time, I'm trying, everybody's dead serious, and we're going along, and all we, all we had was... I say to the boy in front of me, excuse me, what's that? She, he says, that's the Queen. I say, she doesn't play the trumpet, I know, does she? <laughs> I thought it was funny. The boy didn't get the funny side of it, Derek, did he? <laughs> Lost on him. Did she, did she speak to you, Jim, when, when, when you met her? Yeah, she knew, she was very... You get a bit... You get about 30 seconds, Derek, 45 seconds, so it's not a long time. Yeah. And, you know, if somebody puts their, their hand out in front of you, you stand out at the side, and then when he drops his hand, that's you You go forward. Right. And it's um, uh, James Leishman for services to sport in Dunfermline. Wow. And then you stand in front of her, and you get your instructions, what you do and what you can't do and whatever. And, and she asked me about Dunfermline, the ancient capital. Of course, she says, it's a great place, a very historic place. And I says, yes, it is, Mum, and great. And, you know, I've been part of it and whatever, and great. And then she pins your medal on there, and you turn around and you walk out. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, you're, you're, you're the, the proudest man in the world. Aye. You'll always. And your family's here, Derek. Aye. Your family's here. Aye. And we went, my son and I, my, my son-in-law, we went to... Oh, where was it? Oh, what hotel was it? One of the big post hotels there for afternoon tea after it, right? Yeah. So we're sitting and we're having a glass of champagne and sandwiches and whatever, eh? Okay. And then the, the, the mate of the D comes up and says, Would you like some more champagne, sir? So my stupid son, Jamie, he says, Oh, that'd be great. So the boy goes away and gets another bottle. 300 pound a bottle there, eh? And my son, <laughs> I'm saying, what are you doing, Mark? Dad, I thought I was just getting a glass. I thought I was just to get a glass. So it cost another 300 quid. <laughs> oh, dear. No, it was great. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. And then moving into politics then, Jim, what, what was the thinking behind that again? Is that something that you you, you harboured uh, ambitions to go into? You know, as that came out of the blue as well? And that was, uh, I was sitting in the house in Kelly Bridge. The phone rang. And I recognise the voice right away. And, uh, you know, he says, Hi, Jim, it's Gordon here. Right? <laughs> and I say to him, hey, Gordon who? Come on now, Jim. <laughs> famous Wraith Rover supporter. Oh, Gogs. 
So I was winding them up there, okay? And they, he's great. He's a great boy. Yeah? He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he gets criticised too often. Yeah. Uh, but he, for me, he's a great guy. And he, he says, Jim, uh, why I'm phoning you, we'd like you to stand as a counsellor for Dunfermline. And the war that Dunfermline, I says, oh, Gordon, I've never been into politics. Jim, you've done it. You've done it for many years, the way you've handled the football side and helped people, etc. I says, I don't know, Gordon, I'm not sure. He said, I'll phone you next week. Well, he phoned us the next week there, okay? And uh, if he hadn't phoned me, I would never never pursued it. Yeah. And I went down to his house and uh, I said, right, Gordon, I'll try it. I'll do the I'll do the canvas and I'll do door knocking, I'll do whatever. If I get in, I'll try my best. But if I didn't like it, Gordon, I'm, I'm out as quick as I'm in. Because what's the point if I didn't like it? Yeah. Great, Jim. Well, it was in the papers that I was standing as a councillor the next day, there, okay. And uh, my pal, who Kelly Hearts, Ian Thompson, was the chairman. He phoned me up and says, "Leash." Are you stand as a councillor? I says, aye. That's brilliant, man. He says, eh, have you got a canvasser? I says, what do you mean have I got a canvasser? What's a canvasser? Somebody to plan your, 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 your routes and somebody to plan your campaign. I says, I've no got one, have you? He says, I'll do it for you. I says, have you done it before? He says, no. <laughs> so the two of us didn't have a scooby, Derek, right? <laughs> so he picked me up. This is true. He picked me up the next day, six o'clock. She's right, we'll go up the street and we'll knock the doors. I'll do the first two or three that answer the door. Then you can see what a day and then take over. I says, brilliant. So he's got a big rosette, vote leashman and all this. Eh? And uh, he knocks the door, Derek. And this wee wife, he comes to the door, senior citizen. He jumps in front of me and starts singing. <laughs> I like peaches. I like cream. Big Jim's the leader of our team. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, sh- I'm sure Gordon Brown doesn't do that. And the wife says, oh, you're the football boy. You're the boy at the football team. I says, that's me, ma'am. He says, oh, you did a great job with the football team here. There's four of us. We're all going to vote for you. Aye. Good luck. I says, thank you very much. Aye. So he says, right, come across this way. We'll zigzag up the street. He says, well, go up and come. No, no. I'm your manager. Come on. So the second door, the chapter door again, there again. Okay? And this wee wifey comes again, another wife. And he jumps in again, singing the song. <laughs> I like Peach. And away he goes. Big Jim's the leader for your team. <laughs> oh, I can't your mum and dad, son. If you like them hardworking people, you'll do for us for three years. So we're all going to vote for you. Good luck. Two doors, seven votes, there they come. Say, this is wow. brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. So the third door, I says, right, Ian, I'll give a go. I'll try it. He says, no, no, no. I says, Ian, I've got seven votes. Give a shot, I'll try it. I came the song. I like beat. No, no, no. I says, I'm going to get it. So he knocked the door. Just before the opening, he says to me, didn't he? I says, why no? The first two were my aunties. <laughs> you had set me up, Derek, with your aunties, eh? Oh, come on, it's what a laugh we had. <laughs> I, I don't, I chapped all these doors there and I didn't ask one political question. It was all about the fit with Yeah. Unbelievable. And then yeah. I got elected, eh? And then two weeks after I got elected, my very first council meeting, I got made the province. Aye, that's crazy. The kingdom. Never been, never been known there, okay? Yeah. So what, what's it like being the, the, the province to the, the kingdom of Fife then, Jim? It must have... The, I mean, another proud moment for you, I'd imagine, just to just to have just to have that and, and represent the, the the region like that. Derek, I wish my mum and dad were still alive to see it. Eh? Yeah, honestly, I'd love my mum to come to, to have come to some of the functions that I've been at. Yeah, you know what I mean. She would have been so proud. Yeah, and uh, I, I, my my mum was great with me. Derek, I used to go on a Sunday, a, a, a place called the Mental Lounge. This is when I was a professional football player. And going because it was a great cabaret thing. My mum went along to play bingo, then the cabaret was on. No, I'm telling you, I wasn't allowed more than a half pint of lager shandy. Yeah. On a Sunday, when I was sitting there, James, there's people watching you. You're a football player. That's enough. That was a half pint. I couldn't wait to go and get a pint along with the yeah. the, the, the crew or something. But 
that's what she was like. Eh? She was so proud of me, and and, and as was my dad and my, my family, and, and uh, I'd love for them to have seen it. But it's been a great honour, Derek. I can't emphasise what a great honour it is for us. My dad was a coal miner, Derek. Eh? Yeah. And my dad worked in the factory. Yeah. Right. So for me to get that honour is totally amazing, eh? Yeah. With my background, and uh, I got re-elected, Derek, which was. Another great honour, eh? Because it's a five-year stint. So I'm in my ninth year now, eh? Amazing. Going into my tenth. Not so bad. great. Yeah. Fantastic, Derek. So yeah. proud of you. Yeah. Not bad for a, a boy for Lock Gelly, Jim. You've, you've, done the, Aye. you've done yourself well Aye. there, your career in football and uh, with that as well. But Derek, it is, for me, it's a great honour, Derek. Eh? Yeah. Great, man. To, to go and... I went to Twin St Andrews with a place called Loches, just outside Paris. And I went and I had to sign the documents in France. And they came across to St Andrews and to, to sign the historic documents there. But when I went to, I apologised when they came to St Andrews for not speaking their language yeah. and welcoming the language. I said, when I come across to Loches, I'll be speaking your language. And three months after I signed them in St Andrews, Three days a week, I was learning French eh? oh. to go into there to, to speak, to speak, the, to, to do the presentation yeah. in, in France in French. Great. Yeah. It was a great thing. And that's how serious I take it there. Okay? Magic. Well, it's been absolutely sensational having you on, Jim. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So thanks very much for, for coming on the podcast. Well, Derek, it's always to get asked and not being forgotten, Derek, is great. Aye. Because Football, I owe football my, uh, a huge debt of gratitude for football. And if, if anyone's coming into management or anyone's coming in to play the game, don't be scared to give it your best shot. Don't be scared to take a chance. Don't under, underestimate how you got there in the, front, uh, in the first place. And always remember, it's not who you are, it's who you can be.